In this video, we're talking about interior cleaning, more specifically how to clean the dashboard. So that's gonna include the vents, the navigation screen, the top layer surface, the uh, center console, all of that coming up in this video. And if you are looking to start your detailing business, not every customer is always gonna want a interior deep cleaning on their car. A lot of times they'll just want like a maintenance program. So if you do wanna start your detailing business and you wanna offer maintenance details, which is like a thorough wash and a basic interior cleaning, then check the description box down below for a thorough guide on how to actually upsell uh, maintenance programs to your customers so they can pay you weekly, bi-weekly, monthly to uh, maintain their vehicles. Check that in the description below. So any of you that have watched this channel for any length of time, I will be using uh, this um, bristle brush, which you can literally find at any local auto parts store, online, Walmart, basically every place carries this little bristle brush. If you don't want to get the uh, that bristle brush, just use an old toothbrush. It works just about the same. Two Detail Buddy brushes. Uh, there's also the raised glaze set if you, you know, as a different alternative, but this is the Detail Buddy brushes. Uh, the big brush is used for drying and the smaller brush is used for uh, actually agitating with the solution. So just like the, when you use two towels, uh, this one will be to actually clean up, to mop up the messiness or whatever I'm working on. And then this one will be to dry off and buff off any streaks that could be there, uh, like in the vents or in the real uh, tight areas. Then we have Meguiar's D101 Operator's Cleaner diluted 10 to 1. And finally, two different towels. Okay, so before you get started, you want to make sure you look all around and get rid of any personal belongings. So if you reach down here, you see that they have all these uh, just these items. So you want to get rid of them so they don't get in the way or you don't spray them down by accident. They actually wanted to keep them. So just look around and just remove these items that, you know, that clearly aren't there to be cleaned. So you have a better working space to actually work. Now, depending how bad the actual uh, top surface of the dashboard is, I will sometimes spray the actual top layer and then scrub it down with an actual brush, depending if it's like a really old, like 1992, 2000 old vehicle and it's like a work truck and like they've been throwing stuff on there and it's clearly very, very dirty, then yeah, that'll need some agitation. But for the most part, uh, when, it's, when there's just dust, I'll just spray APC onto the towel itself and then I'll just wipe everything down. Again, but sometimes if needed, I will actually brush the dashboard to make sure I'm cleaning it as thoroughly as I can. All right, so the camera's kind of positioned kind of funny, so hopefully it comes out pretty well. But so I'm gonna start off tr working from top, working from top, which is the dashboard, the top of the dashboard, and then working myself down. Uh, again, because you never want to work over yourself. You want to make sure that, you know, you don't want to clean the actual, uh, this part, and then you just come up here, then the cleaner falls down, then you gotta wipe this down. That's gonna just kill your time, especially if you're doing this as a business, it's gonna, it's gonna definitely slow you down. So you always wanna work in a systematic way to make sure you're just cleaning everything in one go without having to go over yourself. Now, are you gonna get that perfect and are you gonna like just, you know, step by step, you're not gonna have to work over yourself? No, I mean, you'll get overspread. You might have to, you know, if the drawers are open, then you want to, um, you know, wipe everything down again. But just, you know, as in, keep that in the back of your mind where you don't wanna work over yourself. So when it comes to the vents, I'll have two brushes. Now again, the small one is where I actually spray the APC and I'll actually agitate the vent with this. Now if you have a steamer, you can also use that, but a lot of times I'm not using a steamer for um, for interior cleanings, depending on you know the interior, but typically I, I won't use one just for the vents because the process I use is pretty, it's pretty efficient. So I always spray into the brush and then wipe it down, well then you know, agitate the vents. Then I'll get a towel and wipe what I can from the outside, from the top layer. Then I'll get the big brush, which is the dry brush, and then I'll use that to dry everything out. Then I'll come back with the brush. Make sure you're kind of playing with the set, the adjustments here so you make sure you're getting everything. Wipe it all down. And then the, these top vents are now done. I'll do the same process on uh, the other vents inside this vehicle. Now, first thing what I'll do here with this uh, navigation panel, um, just cause there's a lot of wedges around here that may be holding a lot of dust. I'll go with the dry brush and I'll just brush everything down. And as you can imagine, this is the, vo this is, this is the volume knob right here. So it's, it's gonna be touched you know, quite often to adjust the volume and such. So you will wanna pay more attention to uh, this one. Um, again, you can, you'll can you be able to tell just by simply looking at it, but obviously like, you know, the, this AC, the, the controlling the AC is going to be touched more, the uh, the FMs, like obviously you're going to inspect and see which ones are dirty, but just by, you know, how people drive, the typical buttons that they touch, 
you'll know which ones are gonna be more dirtier. So I'll just wipe it down just to get like whatever dust I can. Uh, for these knobs here, I can either go with a towel, if, if I can actually clean everything, I'll get everything on a, I'll spray onto a towel and then try to clean like this. And if it gets the job done, then that's good, which it looks like it is. But if it doesn't, if it's just on there too, if it's, you know, if it's really stuck on there, then I'll use the bristle brush and I'm gonna hold this towel here so I don't get it everywhere. But I'll, I'll spray into the bristle brush and then I'll agitate the brush. And I'm using the towel underneath me to catch any of the solution that may fall down. That way I minimize the chances of it drying. And I'll just come back and I'll wipe it down. Then I'll use the dry big brush to get any of that cleaner out of the tight areas. Okay, now if these uh, buttons here are dirty, then again, if you can, just spray into the into the towel and wipe it down to see if that does a job. If it does, then great, you're done there. But if it doesn't, if it doesn't do the job, then step up to something a bit more aggressive. Maybe this bristle brush, bristle brush, this towel, this um, toothbrush, or maybe even the uh, ag agitating towel to really, you know, get all the gunk off. Uh, but it actually wasn't that bad, so the towel did the job. But then we'll just take the towel and wipe it down. Okay, and I'm not gonna worry about actually cleaning the, the LCD screen. Uh, that'll be at the end when I do the entire uh, walkthrough with the O&R to clean on the windows and glass. At that point, I'll touch this up. So I won't worry about actually cleaning off all the fingerprints or any any, sm any smears because uh, that'll be towards the end. Okay, so same process for uh, these uh, knobs here is I'll take the, uh, the agitation brush, I will spray onto here and then I will agitate. And again, it depends how dirty it is. Um, if, it, if I need a more aggressive cleaning, I'll either go with a second application or go with the uh, different brush entirely to make sure I, 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 you know, I'm getting more uh, thorough agitation with a more aggressive brush. And that's what I do. And, and again, it's not about like getting it right on the first try and then you're done. Like it, it's about like you, you do the work, you inspect it, does it need more attention? What areas need more attention? You reapply and then you check your work again. So it's never like I do it once and then I'm done because I'm that good. No, it's more on the on the checking where you really stand out and catch your errors or really address you know areas that that need more attention. And you can't really tell, but there is a bunch of gunk coming off of the dashboard there or whatever you want to call it yeah i don't know if you can't really pick that up but there is dirt there so i'll flip it around to buff off and then this is where i come up again with the dry brush to get any cleaner out and then come back and wipe it down again and again are you going to get everything absolutely perfect and it's going to stay clean for the duration of the time no if you do have the doors open like i do if you have the windows down if there's wind blowing if you're under a tree by the time you're done cleaning the entire interior, you'll have like a layer of dust again. It's just what it is. So you have to come back and wipe it all down towards the end when you're done or blow it out with some forest air or compressed air. But yeah, that's one thing you have to keep in mind. Like once I'm all, when I, once I'm wrapping up the detail, once I'm actually wrapping up the detail, I'll actually start closing the doors as I move. So I minimize the amount of, you know, just dust or debris that can uh, come back in that's gonna make me clean it up again once I'm all done. All right, now, now so going down to this little compartment area where you can store things. Uh, a lot of times the really cool cars that are great to work with is when you can actually pull this out. So now I'll just, you know, discard, put this to the side, vacuum it, brush it down and it'll be good as new. And then I have a, you know, even better area to work with down here. Now you can't really tell cause it's rather dark. Um, but anyways, you'll vacuum this part out because there's like crumbs and stuff in there. So you'll vacuum that out. And if it's really, if it's not that bad, I actually don't vacuum it out until the end. So right now it's not that bad. So I won't vacuum it out until the very end, but there is still uh, some dirt laying around that some crumbs. So I don't want to clean that up. So I'll just take the brush and literally just brush it out for now. And so, cause that's, it's not that bad. So I don't need to pull out the vacuum right now to vacuum it up. Cause I can just easily brush it out and continue with the agitation with the brush and the cleaner. Okay, and same process as we've been following. I'm gonna spray into the brush here and then I'm gonna work the uh, area. Okay. And for those of you that might be a bit hesitant into spraying a solution around anything, um, I, I mean, as long as you're applying some common sense and you're not directly spraying, you know, half the bottle into a specific area, you should be fine with electronics. Um, so don't think that, you, you know, you, you, you missed one simple little 
you know, if you do this and you're gonna ruin all the electronics, that's probably not gonna happen. Uh, again, applying common sense, you should be fine. Now I'll get this boot area here. Now here I actually wait to clean this because um, just it, I don't think this type of brush won't get thorough cleaning around the entire knob. So I'd rather the shifter, so I'd rather just wait and use this bristle brush. But first, let me wipe this all down. And one thing to keep in mind is that if you're like kind of lengthy, I'm not lengthy at all, I'm only 5'6". But if you are kind of lengthy, you will be put in some pretty odd positions when you're in an interior. Um, so just be aware that you may have, you know, your first time doing interiors, you may be having some soreness or something because you, you could, depending on the car you have, how small it is, how tall you are, um, it could put you in some rather strange areas for a prolonged amount of time. And as you can guess, what are we gonna do next? You're right, we're gonna get this brush and we're gonna work all the solution out of the hard to reach areas. Okay, come back and dry it all up. All right, so the actual shifty here, I'll use the uh, bristle brush. And again, I'm using this towel so I don't um, I don't spray the, the solution like anywhere that I've cleaned or anywhere at all where it might dry so it catches everything. So I keep a, a, a clean work area. And again, I'm covering this because if I didn't, it'll fling some of that solution up and down. So if I put this towel over it, then it'll catch everything into the towel. And again, I'm just minimizing the mess I'm creating for myself. And then reapply as needed. And keep in mind, you could be pulling off dirt or you could be pulling off the actual pigment of the uh, material that you're working on. So if you're really like just agitating super, super strong, and look at all that filth that we pulled off. And you just keep on agitating and you're saying, man, there's a lot of dirt coming off. Make sure it's actually dirt and not the actual color of the, um, the pigment of the actual material that you're cleaning. Whether it be leather, whether it be this, whether it be like this plastic here, you can pull off um, the actual, you know, the pigment of it. And then it'll just look very, very, very funny because it'll, it'll have like a white blemish to it depending on the color of the material over here, black. It'll have, you could, you'll clearly tell that like it, it's much different than everything else. Okay, that's done there. Now again, don't worry if there's like a few uh, bits of drops here and there of solution. Um, again, at the end of it, I, you want to wipe everything down with either like a towel and water or a towel and O and R. Um, just to make sure you're, you're removing all, any less, any less uh, smudges or overspray that you may have missed. So I'm not going to worry like if there's like a, a single little drop of um, of APC there because at the end I'm gonna come around and wipe everything down one more time. So I don't know how well it's picking this up, but now we, I'm gonna clean these uh, the turn signal, um, whatever you want to call this. So uh, the way I go about it is by simply spraying it into the bristle brush, and then as I did the same with the shifter, I'm going to cover the brush so it doesn't fling everywhere and get and work side by side. Uh, section by section so right now I'm gonna clean the front facing part of it just to make sure I'm getting all that area then I'll switch to the top and work all the top area of it and apply any uh, more APC if needed which after this it will then I'll go to the back side and clean that probably is getting picked up fairly well on the camera I can't really see and finally, on the side. And again, you do you, again. You, it's all about inspecting uh, because you have to look at it in different manners to make sure you're getting all the dirt off. Because again, if I'm looking at just from the front side, it's gonna look well. But maybe on the top side, the bottom, uh, where the where you you know the button that you press, maybe those are actually really dirty. So you want to look at it in all different ways to make sure you're getting. Uh, the best cleaning out of it. Okay, so now that we've cleaned everything on the dashboard, um, what I, what I, like as, as I mentioned, I wiped everything down at the end because a layer of dust probably built up because we did, we have the doors open, the windows open, the wind's kicking some stuff in, uh, some overspray from the APC that's gonna land on certain areas. So all we're gonna do is this is um, O and R diluted for clay lube. We're gonna spray just a few uh, a bit on the towel, and then we're literally just going to wipe down the entire interior one more time and this is just to take off to remove any blemishes any overspray maybe any smudge we left over um it's just to get that make sure to bring it back up to par before we turn it in to the customer or if you're doing this as a uh, for your personal car then that'll be for you and you're gonna buff off make sure it's all nice and dry 
and we'll literally do this for the rest of the interior um and by rest of the interior i just don't mean the dashboard but the interior door panels the leather seats the fabric seats um basically everything gets wiped down at the end of the detail um just again just to ensure the quality is up to par before you hand it off to the customer or before you yourself is completed with the vehicle okay and that wraps up cleaning the dashboard the vents the center console the navigation panel um it's gonna differ little by little depending on the car and the condition uh this vehicle wasn't all that bad so i didn't get too aggressive with it but again if i'm cleaning like a 2000 vehicle that's just you know it's been hammered there's been stuff thrown on the dashboard or like it's, it was a farm truck or something then yeah that's gonna have a, a higher level of cleaning and much more thoroughness than you know if it's a moderately dirty car that was you know fairly maintained for a couple of years then uh, it's gonna be two different uh types of methods to go there but that was just more on a you know a basic uh pretty average vehicle of dirtiness so again you want to tailor this to the situation that you're in you always want to make sure that you're actually cleaning the dirt off of the material and not actually taking off the color or the pigment of the leather or whatever surface you're cleaning because that can happen it has happened to me you learn from experience so just keep that in the back of your head where are you am i actually cleaning dirt because it keeps on getting pulled off or is it just the actual pigment coming off other than that uh, leave your comments down below let me know if you do anything differently if you incorporate the steamer a lot more i do have one if i'm I, if i'm gonna heavily use it in the interior i will use it more on the vents and the navigation panel but typically i i don't just because uh just because i just don't so uh, leave your comments down below like this video subscribe and then i'll see you on the next video